Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. I'm Frozen Island, and today I'm playing a bit of Binding Isaac, and yeah, I mean, if you can't tell my voice, I'm probably <laughs> I have got the dreaded lurgy, as it were. Pretty good cane run, I haven't been cane in a while. I quite like cane. So if there are some uh, weird and randomful kind of like random stops and jump cuts throughout my video, it's probably because I. I either had a massive coughing fit, <laughs> or I sneezed the mountain tops off. Um, <laughs> uh, I say I, I probably picked it up to spend um, throughout the week earlier or the end of the week some time with uh, with my uh, younger parts of the family, shall we say. New kids, babies, stuff like that. I don't know what it is, but they, they always seem to uh, carry so much more germs. <laughs> it's either that or my car made me sick, which is hilarious, because I was trying to have, uh, basically did some maintenance on it the other day, so maybe I got sick from my car? Who knows? It could be an interesting debate, that one. Let, let's go see what's in the shop, shall we? So yeah, my voice sounds, uh, to me, very off, and so does everything else, to be honest, but... Still want to get a video out, because I think it's the right thing to do. Between that and, like, I'm okay, like, I'm feeling fine. Just, uh, sniffing, coughing, and sneezing all over the place. So... As I started feeling a little bit better, I was like, eh, maybe I could squeeze out, like, a small video or something. You know. But with any luck, it'll be alright. I was going to do some other, recording some other games, but with the length of them, I probably wouldn't last it, so... There'd be so much random stuff of me just being like, uh, no, nah, we'll stop there before I, uh, sneeze. And trust me, for headphone wearers, that probably will not be the, uh, best thing for them to deal with. But yeah, I'm all drugged up, as they would say, with, uh, pretty much anti-flu medication got my lens zip on me and everything else as well, so... Teardrops. Gotta find the item room, though. That is on my list of things to do here first. It's always really annoying, because like, when I get sick or like I get the cold or stuff, I don't really feel any different. Except for maybe like a bit of a head cold. Little haunt. It's just my nose is like Niagara Falls. <laughs> Which is really annoying. And it's not... I would say... It's not that it stops you from working. It's just like if in an office environment, it's not exactly nice for... The rest of the people in the office, so I will tend to try and work from home. I mean, it does like harm my efficiency, no doubt about it, like 100%. And to be honest, I'm probably better off not going into work, but you know, I'm a person that suffers from things like migraines and stuff like that, which can I can kind of predict and control to a certain degree because. I feel like I know what causes them, or at least I know what doesn't help them, you know. So, those will tend to take me out for like a day or two, mainly a day, but they have been getting worse recently. So, with those existing, I tend to, um, if I'm not feeling 100%, still going to work, because I know I'll need that sort of sick day elsewhere. It is really annoying, and I hate that employers base your performance and your attendance as part of that, when, like, if you're ill, you're ill, man. Like, there, there's nothing much you can do about it. I 
like I, I I've had friends that like had long term illnesses and stuff like that, which they end up like having to leave their job, which it's fine if you can't do the job, but if you can still do the job, it just seems rather kind of pay. <laughs> Like, I, I understand it from like a, a you know, business perspective. You don't want all your people being sick and stuff, but... I think companies should do it more on the idea of the fact that you are given unlimited sick days, but it's at the discretion of the company whether those are being abused or not, in a way. And then for them to be fair about it, like... We always have good pills, don't we? Gotta remember that. Huh. Nothing really good in here. Let's do this. There we go. And I guess we're off to face the boss. But before we do, bail me. Yep, that was a nice sneeze. <laughs> Sorry about that. Like, there's probably going to be a fair few of them in this video, like, 100%. You know, I don't want to blow the eardrums out of all the headphone users every time I want to sneeze, but it'd be absolutely hilarious for you guys if I didn't tell you and suddenly it was like, achoo! <laughs> like, the top of my lungs. Uh... BJs. How delightful. So, anyway, I mean... I managed to, um, like, earlier on the week, something I didn't mention, was, like, I kind of, like, kind of catch up with some friends and stuff, hence, like, spending it with their kids, and, like, I can't really picture, like, their family and stuff, but... To me, they kind of are gods and stuff like that. Anyway, I was, like, um... We got talking about, like, kind of, like, the, the, the good old college days. Now, for Americans, um... College, for us, is, like, um... Just before you reach 18. So it's is that kind of like your high school era, I guess, for you guys? I, I kind of forget like the age difference, but basically it's before you go to university here. Essentially, our universities are like your colleges, I think. But anyway, um, and we we were talking about like our like kind of um, physics and biology and chemistry lessons because we all kind of were in the same class, and. We were chatting on like the, the the silliness we got up to with um, trying to realize what type of movie monsters you could make, like in reality, like how would they exist? We'd spend our entire time basically going, okay, well, you know, how would you develop a vampire in reality? Like, like what would exist? So we'd figure out like there's a genetic condition that essentially makes human beings more sensitive to sunlight, which there generally is. There is also some that prevents the um, production of hemoglobin that naturally within the body, like normal red blood cells, which, you know, pretty much just leads to death in most cases, but there are ones that hinder the process, which aren't as severe, I think it was, some of that. We, we looked at, like, all these different medical conditions, and we kind of, like, bundled together into, like, a genetic virus that would then also essentially want to make the host survive, so almost like a parasite in a way as well, like a parasitic virus, that would basically then mutate the host, or at least, like, cause physical changes and go through that, like, make them go through the process to be able to survive with those genetic conditions. And, of course, then you have the other bonuses of, like, you know, increased strength, durability, that sort of stuff. Like, why does it do that? Because it doesn't want the host to die through other means. Because, you know, it sounds stupid. You know, if you've got someone that, essentially, their blood isn't able to, um, coagulate, so basically produce, um, sc uh, scabs and stuff like that, um, with no platelets in it, which essentially is what vampires are having, you've got to have a natural regeneration, so your cells have got to, to you know, split and divide quicker to be able to compensate to heal up wounds so you don't bleed to death. 
And essentially, yeah, we went through all like the basic powers and stuff like that, being like, well, could they technically do this? Is there a way for them to be able to do this, right? And then we went through certain ones, like, you know, could they live off animal blood and stuff like that? And we were like, no, they couldn't do that because, you know, like, it, it wouldn't work in the sense that the blood would still work, but it wouldn't be as effective because it's animal blood, you know, like, your body would attack it and stuff like that. They still have an immune system. If anything, they have a hyperimmune system because the virus itself will kill anything else that's a foreign body. Hence why they can't survive on just animal blood. You know, it's like all these little things that we then messed around with. It was absolutely brilliant. I mean, I don't know if... I think I've got a book of me somewhere from my college days. Like, all this stuff we ended up writing down. And maybe I should pull it out and be like, we'll go through it all. Or just maybe it'll be something interesting to do. Kind of like um, pull off that research again and be like, yeah, this is what would happen. This is what you do. This is how you do stuff. I should take both of these, I think. I'm taking that anyway. Yeah, we'll take that as well. Gives me demon wings. The ability to fly. Because we've got flight. We fly. Let's go back and pick some stuff up. So I think we had some rooms with some good stuff that was uh, floating about. Yes, we did. The shop is now worth it. Pay to play. Interesting. I eh, just donate. Gotta work on that donation machine if we can. Okay, we can never do any more donating. I am disappointed. But yeah, it's kind of interesting, right? Yeah, this is worth it. One puberty pill. A luck upgrade, nice. But yeah, we got up to so much rubbish like during my lessons like that. I'm surprised even past college. <laughs> I guess I kind of got lucky in that sense, you know. Another pretty flat. Eh, still go with the poop one for now. I don't know what the other one does. It could be like amazing, but to me, I don't know what it does, so there's no point having it. It's like, yeah, were Werewolves was another one that we did quite a lot in Zombies and stuff like that. Zombies are all my favourite. There are plenty of games out there, and I think there are a few. I've even played some of them, but for the god of life of me, I can never remember the name of them. And then whenever I do remember the name, I feel like I don't know it. So, um, I think that's like a ninja-esque kind of like vampire, no, a ninja-esque kind of zombie game where like zombies are not actual zombies, they're more like parasites that live in hosts and control them. When you cut the heads off they kind of jump out and kind of bite other things and it's kind of really interesting and I like that idea so much because to me, on just a normal, like a normal level, it kind of explained why zombies existed, right? Like, it made more sense to me why zombies existed there. Something's wrong. Look up. Because now you kind of get it, right? So, the parasite invades the host. It then lays eggs in the host. The host kind of has this nervous system hijack, so the worm itself doesn't understand how the human body works. Like, it doesn't feel hunger, it doesn't get all that stuff at all, so eventually after a long period of time the human will die. Like it just will happen. They'll basically starve to death, so they basically end up becoming a rotting corpse. But the worm will still need some level of sustenance itself, so it knows to try and basically attack and eat other humans or whatever it can get its hands on essentially, at which point in some cases it will either lay its eggs within them and stuff like that, and it becomes really a unique way of um Creating zombies, in my opinion. Right? Which I understand is like why the muscles and everything else like start to deteriorate, why it becomes a bit of an issue for then the things to start moving around, because like it's not supplying the body with enough nutrients, because essentially it ends up taking them all for itself. 
I agreed. I agreed. You know, and it also gets the idea of, like, why you might get variant zombies as well. So, like, um... If you think about it more in the idea that these worms aren't just singular worms, they're like a hive mind. This would also explain why you might get variances in the worms. So, like, the, the most basic ones are the drones that you end up getting, right? And stuff like that. And then we start adding to them to try and make them more interesting to essentially just not make them mindless. Like, why they hoard together. Like, what, honestly, like, this is the one thing that always baffles me, right? I, I, I get zombies who chase stuff down and everything else as well, but the fact that the zombies eventually end up congregating in particular areas, and you think, oh yeah, that's because there's only a single food source. But no, zombies would run after anything, anything that made a sound, and after, like, years of, like, dilapidation and everything else, the buildings and stuff like that, these zombies would eventually just run all over the place. Like, they'd be scattered in the fields and forests and stuff like that because they were chasing an animal they could never catch, right? Like, this idea of a hive mind also explained, like, why they would end up creating hordes. And why these hordes all go in the same direction. We'll just collect all these, bear with me. Yeah, uh, if you guys, like, these cuts are going to be, like, just cuts. For me, like, they're actually, like, time I've got to spend to <laughs> both editing these and also the time I spent actually, like, sneezing and coughing. But yeah, the, the, the zombie one is, I, I, I thought, was the most interesting. So, yeah, you get the, the zombie parasite that basically hijacks a human's immune system, like, a nervous system and stuff like that doesn't care about anything else as long as the host is movable, essentially, and the fact that it can still claim nutrients from its environment as well as the host. So it doesn't really care if the host eventually does die as long as it completes its life cycle, which is why eventually it doesn't complete its life cycle. Ooh, a charge. Is he just charge, baby, is he? Come on. Bomb, baby. Oh, you gave me a bomb upgrade. How delightful. And this idea of, like, them serving a hive mind like a queen is really interesting to me as well. I love that idea. I thought it was absolutely brilliant, which then explained, like, why we have hordes of them and... Why, in some cases, they, will, like, migrate all at once and why they all roam around together rather than, like, by themselves. It also explain like why they all go into dormancy in some cases, rather than just like stuff like that. Between that, they all share information, so it's not just like when they hear a sound, they all come running, which is the one reason why we really got annoyed. It's not like you know, are oh, they all hear a sound and so they all go there because they don't all hear a sound. Some of them won't be capable of hearing sounds. The worm could feel vibrations and like the ground stuff through the feet, maybe, or have other sensory stuff, but like once that uh, the body's host degrades enough, like it won't have the ability to do that stuff anymore. Right? So there were ways that we had to kind of like figure out all these problems and stuff, which I always. I actually found like really interesting. But then, like, I'm a nerd that focuses on like minute details and my mates will get really annoyed by me when I, when, I, when I do stuff like that, right? We've got the brother of soy milk. Ooh. There's options. Should probably pick that up first. Soy milk's little brother. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a massive fan of, like, um, most horror movies and stuff. And to be honest, like, the only reason that I got into horror f films in the first place when I was younger is because I started watching a very particular horror film 
and I kind of like at that point like for me it was both um, psychological as well as like actual horror now this title of the movie is probably very wrong or is completely correct and I am you know I just generally don't know this is the issue because it's such a long go by I believe it was about like 10 or 11 when I started watching this film and I believe it was a film called They now that could be wrong but the premise of the film basically is the whole monster under the bed scenario but the monster in the closet right And essentially what ends up happening is throughout the film is, you know, the, 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 these kids get haunted by these monsters, like, throughout the sort of first part of the video. Eh, Dark Matter is actually fine. I don't know if any of those can be sore hearts. I would love to have them, but I can't. So yeah, these kids are haunted and basically stalked by... Um, these monsters, like, throughout their lives, like, until they get to a certain age, and then eventually when they become of age, these monsters come back to claim them. And basically, these monsters, they live kind of not in the darkness, but, like, the darkness is a realm, it's like a window to their realm. Yeah? Hence why they come from under the bed, or from the closet, or you know, from dark places, which is really a, kind of like an awesome premise just in itself, yeah? Like, the darkness is a gateway to their dimension, essentially. Now, the way that they kind of, like, mark the children is they kind of leave almost like a thorn-type nail in their bodies, which means they can track them. So when they grow older, they can stalk them down, and... Like, this film's been out for ages, considering my age as well, so if I'm spoiling it for you, it's kind of like... Yeah. Like... You know, usual stuff, but stop the video, go watch it, find it. Um, it is, I think... I don't think it's great, I got nostalgia for it. I've never been able to find it since. <laughs> like, I think I have several times, and I don't end up, like, actually following through with it, because, you know... My attention span doesn't last that long. Um... But yeah, like, the, the whole point is, like, this person thinks, like, this monster is stalking them and stuff like that, and then realise that it's not just, like, one, it's, like, several, and... Basically, ooh, Spoonbender, brilliant. And basically, like, at the end of the film, um, what's happening is, obviously, like, she thinks she's won, she thinks she's stopped everything, she gets put in a mental institution, and thinks everything's all hunky dory and absolutely fine and then like she's obviously still traumatized from the experience it's like yeah you would be then like a nurse like kind of just ignores her pretends like you know like she's still mad and usual stuff like that then you kind of like the camera like pans over to like an open closet area with like the doors left open and then she's not in the room when the nurse comes back in, and you're like, oh, like, what's happened here? And you're thinking, like, oh, you know, like, that's just maybe just unusual. And then it flits to the perspective of the main character, and you see what's actually happened. And this is the thing that really got me back in the, when I first started watching that, it's like, there's no happy ending, and I love that sort of thing, is the fact that you saw her banging on, like, an invisible wall with the woman standing directly in front of her, the nurse and not noticing she was there because she couldn't see empty closet. And like she's screaming, she's yelling, you can hear all like the monsters lurking in the dark because they're scared of the light and stuff like that. And then she just slowly closes the door and like, oh, it was such a good scene. Like genuinely it was such a good scene because like as she's closing the door, like you just all the monsters get louder and louder and louder and then you, you don't see anything because it's all pitch darkness, right? And then, yeah, you just tell the monsters, like, literally eat her alive. Ah, oh, I didn't want to do that. But yeah, really good film. I absolutely loved it back then. 
I mean, obviously, yeah, there are far better films out. It probably wasn't that great. It, the fact that I can never remember the title of it or ever seem to find it that easy is indicative of all those sort of things, but... Bear with me. Sorry about that. We're back. Kind of cleared the room at the same time, but yeah, my bad. But, yeah, no, it was... Um, I absolutely loved that film. And the, the, the monsters, I thought, were, like, really well designed. Now, I think the only thing I probably was disappointed back, if I think correctly then, is they actually showed you what the monsters looked like. I think? I can't remember. But, if they did, that is definitely a no-no. The, these monsters, or aliens, whatever you want to call them, should not really ever be shown on camera. It's a particular rule, I will stick to it to the day I die. If you've got a monster that is genuinely scary and is enough to like freak out your audiences and lurks in darkness and basically normally is not shown on camera, you never, ever, ever, ever show them on camera. I don't care what they look like. And a good example of what I mean when I say this is... Um, some health at least. Let's go down. Is um, in the UK we got a TV show called Doctor Who. It's been around for like years and years and years and to be honest I've stopped watching it now because of many different things of it just being not as good as it used to be and we can argue to the cows go home on that. Um, <laughs> massive fans will argue for both for and against it on both sides. But for me, yeah, it isn't as good as it used to be, so I kind of just stopped watching it. Now, in that show, there are basically aliens, um, but they're kind of not really, in my opinion, because they're scary as hell, um, called Weeping Angels. Now, if you ever seen, like, a church or stuff like that, um, there are quite lots of predictions of angel-like figurines with either, like, their faces covered or stuff like that. And essentially, that's what the Weeping Angels are. They are statues of those, but only when you can see them. Now, the very first episode these were ever shown was done brilliantly. Because, essentially, it was done with the style of you as a viewer were also part of what was seeing them, right? So whenever you saw them, they would stand still. They wouldn't move. And that was the thing that made them scary. Right? It didn't matter who was seeing them. If it was you, it was one of the characters in the story or anything else, well, they did not move. And you could see many scenes with them in the background where you could see them, you would then have the camera move away from the main the character it was focusing on, it would look back and it would have changed position. <laughs> Ooh, health up. I'll take that. I'll just get a HP for that. And I generally mean it was done so, so well because of that. Right? And like the whole reason that they go walking around with their hands covering their eyes is the fact that then they don't accidentally look into the eyes of someone else or you know, someone else doesn't see them, right? So like one of their own brethren, they don't look at them and they don't look at each other so that's also an issue because so they can't look at each other while they hunt so it's kind of really interesting. And the other thing I liked about them is is basically what they do to feed. Um, they essentially feed on um, the potential your life could have, right? So instead of killing you, what they do is they send you back in time. That is what they do to basically remove you. They, re they remove you from where you are and they feed on the potential your life would have had by sending you back in time. And that's kind of like how this story ends up getting set up. It's like, you know, the Doctor main character basically have got sent back in time and the Doctor actually technically has a time machine so he could travel anywhere he wants, but it's left in the present while he's stuck in the past. 
so he's then made a recording essentially dictating everything that happened and because he knows the future he can tell the people kind of like semi what to do because he's got notes from someone who was helping him right it's really weird it's like really well done but like it's been ages since I've seen it. But yeah, like it, it's, I, I thought it was like absolutely brilliant, right? So like that's a movie monster that was unique, interesting, dynamic. Uh, I died there, oh well. Shame, I had a good run on our hands. Probably shouldn't have took the um, <laughs> soy milk's little brother. But yeah, like that 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 movie monster is something that we don't really have today, and I'm very disappointed by it. But I love like creating stuff like that if you ever get the opportunity, and it makes it interesting because especially when I do like D D campaigns, if you want to create monsters and hybrids and stuff like that, you can kind of like take bits and weaknesses from all sorts of different things, and then put them into one monster and be like, "Here's your homebrew hybrid to try and deal with. Find out what its weaknesses are. See what happens." <laughs> but yeah, again, if you do enjoy these videos, do leave a like, subscribe to see more. And I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.